Well, as, as the wind blows here in Swift Current, Saskatchewan, Canada, right along the prairies, a couple hours west of the capital city of Saskatchewan, Regina. It's a hustling and bustling town, city, pardon me, of 15,000 people. As they like to say with their motto, where life makes sense. We make sense here at the Credit Union Iplex. As a symbolic combine out in front. In a farming community, farming area. The curling, also a hobby of many people in the province's provincial sport. It is curling. And we're at the Iplex for the 2016 Ford World Women's Curling Championship. Luke Oli joined with Hans Frauenlob. It is going to be another fun night. We had one session already, and it's going to be even more as we have Italy taking on Japan this evening for draw number two. So everyone will be on the ice after tonight's game. Have one played at least one game. Starting to get into the mix of things and feel the competition well underway. Yes, Luke, it's great to be here in the curling heartland. This is absolutely ground zero as far as uh, the Canadian curling culture goes. Southwestern Saskatchewan and a good game for us tonight. Italy's going to be looking to bounce back after their tough loss this afternoon to Russia, and Japan's going to look to try and keep it rolling against this Italian team. And the team's lined up, ready to go. They've been piped in. As the teams await, they go through the process, they do their practice. Now they're ready to go. The Japanese flags are in the crowd, becoming an adopted team by many in the building. I'm seeing all kinds of uh, nation's flags waving throughout. Well, it's a great turnout here in Swift Current tonight, as it will be right throughout the week. It's uh, great curling fans here. We see in the distance in our long shot here, your Team Scotland being honored before this draw. Let's meet the teams here for Italy. Their lead, Maria Gaspari, Chiara Olivieri, the second, the third, Stefania Minardi. And their skip in her first world championship appearance, Federica Apollonio. They'll take on Japan with their lead, Yorika Yoshida. Second, Yumi Suzuki. Third, Chinami Yoshida. And their skip, Sasuke Fujisawa. Excited after a win earlier. We'll try and make it two in a row as we look at the standings there. Uh, some teams not having played a game yet. Well, Canada, Japan, Russia, and Switzerland all winning. Germany, Korea, Scotland, and Sweden will make their first appearance on the ice tonight. Denmark, Finland, Italy, and the U.S. round out the 12-team field as we will play a 11-game round robin. Top four will go to the playoffs. Every game crucial, as we'll look at the other games going on in draw two. Italy and Japan, our feature game will be on sheet A. Scotland and Sweden will do battle on sheet B. Sheet C is Germany taking on the Korean side. While on sheet D, Russia, with a win earlier, takes on Finland on the other side sheet. Here at the Credit Union Iplex. There's the magic words, let the games begin. Good curling, and it should be a good game. We'll see how Italy responds. They had a tough one earlier, an 8-2 loss at the hands of one of the, arguably the favorites coming in in Russia. Now they gotta bounce back. They get to go back out on the ice. I, I, I think that's a good thing for this team. I agree, Luke. It's it's going to be a real challenge for this Italian team because we saw earlier in the day today this Japanese team put in a really solid performance against Finland. So Italy will be in tough, but you're right. After a loss, you like to try and bounce back and not sleep on it, but just get right back at it. So it'll be a big test for them. It's As, as you say, it's a young Italian side. Uh, it's the first World Championships for their skip and also for their third, Stefania Minardi. So big test for them, but this is where everybody wants to be. Uh, this is the qualifier, not only to win a world championship, but to get your country into the Olympics. So both of these teams are really going to be putting everything into this game. Even though it's early in the week, a win is really important. Well, Japan, trying to use that momentum. They were aggressive early. 
Well, they will start without the hammer. Well, the hammer's on a opposite on either end. As we see it, it did look like Japan was a little closer, but not going to be the official judgment on that one. The, the Japanese team just pointing that out to the official. <laughs> it's us, it's us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the translation. There we go. And if you're just joining us, they do have uh, two stones that they throw to the, the button to determine last stone in the first end. One is the clockwise turn. For a right-hander, that's an in-turn. And then for the a counterclockwise one, which is an out-turn for a righty, as most uh, players do deliver right-handed. Yes, for everybody in the field except for Vicky Sloan, it's an out-turn. That's right. That's why they go to the clockwise and counterclockwise to make it easier, as we see. Italy will have the red stones, of course, with the blue jackets, the dark colors, going with the stones, and Japan will wear white and have the yellow stones in this game. So in my limited Italian, Cinque means five, so that looks for looking for a T-line draw, using the zone system to communicate weight. Maria Gaspari will get things going. And into the rings, Japan with the hammer. We'll see what they do. Earlier today, they put up the corner. This looks like the hit. Yes, playing it a little bit cautiously, both teams here in this first end. Maybe just feeling out the ice conditions. They had to, both had a look at the ice earlier on today. Yurika Yoshida with a nice hit and roll. This Italian team representing the Tofani Curling Club in Cortina d'Ampezzo. Beautiful, beautiful part of Italy. Might be the curling club with the nicest view out the windows <laughs> anywhere on earth. Oh, hit and roll back to the middle, just keeping things into the center. Here, first end. Uh, part of the reason playing this, uh, playing a second game back to back, it was a, a longer game. It went into the tenth end, so maybe a little, little worn out as well. Obviously, everyone in real good shape, but not to burn out too early. Yeah, I think the Japan will be happy just to play it straight up and down with the Italians in this first end. If they blank, they'd be quite happy about that. Right on the beak. Chiara Oliveri. Again, in my limited Italian, tuta, tuta, tuta means sweep it all the way. Sweeper's got a piece, but they rolled out. House is empty for the Japanese. Well, the rollout. Now is a chance. Less risk to throw the corner guard, try and play that way. Absolutely. You might as well throw up a corner and uh, see if you can generate something. Here's Yumi Suzuki. She had a blinder in that first game that we saw earlier on today against Finland. Probably the player of the match for me. Very nice corner drug. So again, we see the Italians defensive. We see the rules of play. Six ends minimum in a 10 end game. 38 minutes of thinking time for each team. Each team can call one 60 second timeout when their coach can come onto the field of play. Oh, oh. 
Chiara Olivieri play the peel. And we'll get that one out of play, just keeping it open. First end. Again, definitely a strategy. They gave up a two earlier in the early game to Russia. Then they gave up a steal, and they don't want to get too far down too early. They keep it a little simpler, stay close, play a solid game, and it's all they can expect. Yeah, and I think that's a good strategy for this uh, game, Luke. We saw that this Japanese team, once they got a lead, um, they were pretty much able to peel Finland out, and they were quite dominant. So the Italians will be thinking you're exactly right. Don't want to drop a two in the first end. Just try to keep things nice and tight. Here's Italian third, Stefania Minardi. Well, her first world championship, played world juniors with her skip, Federica Apolonio. Apolonio. Slight look of concern on Stefania's face. Is it going to curl? Well, hoping to catch enough of it and be able to do just that. A little worry for a moment. Well, we've seen that the stones will always come back as long as you don't massively overthrow it. There's a lot of curl in this ice. Head ice technician Jamie Barassa has again delivered a fantastic playing surface for the competitors. Probably five and a half feet of curl on a draw, nice and quick. So we should see some really interesting shots in this match. Here's Chinami Yoshida. Japan also using the zonal numbering system for communicating weight. In my limited Japanese, knee means two. That's a mid guard. Nice shot. And mixing, going to different spots, different uh, positions on the ice. So it's not the same peel in the same area. It's a good opportunity for the skips to get a feel for how much it's going to break to the wings. Get a look all over the sheet. Again, able to make that one go away. So wide open rings here in end number one of this second draw. This Japanese team representing the club from Tokoro which is in Hokkaido, the northernmost island in Japan. So just to the side of the 12 foot, one stone in and skip stones. So a pretty conservative first end. Both teams just feeling their way into the game. Federica, skip of this Italian side. The out turn hit. Of course, she's 24 years of age. And just a little roll out, not much. It's good, even though it's an open hit, just making a, a routine shot early in the game can re really settle the nerves for these players. As you said, this is Federica's first game at a world championship, so you wouldn't be human if you didn't have some nerves walking onto the biggest stage of all. Well, here, just the one sweeper. Suzuki trying to hold the line for their skipper. Satsuki Fujisawa. 
I love watching the Japanese team when they, uh, always a smile on their face. They're very animated, very energetic, fun to watch, team curl. It's definitely right. There's definitely a team culture in Japan. And uh, even when things are tough, they're always smiling, trying to pick each other up. Would love to stick around, so they force Japan to play their last to hit and roll out, but they won't do that. They'll roll out themselves. Meaning, let's take a look at spot of the ice where we haven't thrown and see what it's going to do. That's right, Luke. It's another free look for Satsuki Fujisawa. You never know later in the game, you might have to go there and play a similar shot. So even though she's throwing it through, you use every shot as an opportunity to learn something about the ice. So final shot, first end. Satsuki Fujisawa. Won't throw that one, no. Don't think they learned that much. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it still means a blank first end, so no score through one end of play. Italy and Japan, live from Swift Current, Canada. Well, a good-looking crowd there over the shoulders of the skips. No score here, second end. Luke Coley, Hans Frohnlob, as we await the go-ahead from the official. Time between ends, and Maria Gaspari in the hack, as we did in the first. We'll get us started. So I think if the Italians do to come into the rings this time, we might see the Japanese elect a corner guard, but first things first, let's see where we go here with the lead rock of Maria Gaspari. Well, that one right to the back of the button. Okay, we see Satsuki Fujisawa asking for a, a technical timeout by the looks of it. Concerned about something. Is it maybe the handle, the uh, sensors and the handles that they use? I'm sure that's exactly what it is, Luke. We can see the players looking at the stone and there's a little light indicator which tells the officials if the stone is a legal throw or not, if it's, they have to let it go before the hog line and sometimes the handle doesn't reset properly. So the player is letting the official know. I think I heard the official just say, I'll just stand over and you'll see by the A, there are a couple of sets of light. If it, they release it in time, it's green. If they don't, it's red and gets pulled. Not quite working, so. Normally when the player turns the handle over, that now we can see that little flashing LED, so it, the rock has reset itself this time. 
It's a terrific system, uh, this eye on the rock hog line detection, because uh, prior to that, hog line officials tried to judge that with the naked eye, and it was very difficult. This system is much preferred by the players. Well, they did have the official stand there, just make sure, so, because it is flashing red, so they wanted to make sure it wasn't a violation. That's good awareness by the Japanese team. Fujisawa knew that uh, in that situation, the right thing to do was just ask for a technical timeout, and she did. Here you uh, watch the release, and well before the hog line, and then <laughs> it goes red, so the sweepers were like, even after all that, Thought it might be pulled, but there was no controversy there. That was well before the hog line. So trading hits in these first couple ends. We've seen great growth in both these nations as far as curling and their effect on the Olympics. It was Japan that had it in 98. 2006, it was Italy uh, that hosted the Olympics. Italy's still uh, trying to progress uh, a bit. They still just have 10 curling sheets in their entire country. Uh, they were here practicing at the Caledonian Curling Club in Regina prior to the event. That, sh that curling club itself has 12. That's more than the entire country of Italy. Well, coming from a country myself that's got eight curling sheets, I can sympathize <laughs> entirely with the Italians. And so, but it is a start. And as you say, the Olympics has had a profound effect on curling in Japan and in Italy. There's been a Japanese women's team at every Winter Olympics since 1998. Of course, the 1998 Winter Olympics were in Japan, and that's when the medal sport of curling made its debut. Now, not wanting to get into a game behind just a corner, Chiara Olivieri tried to get it and will lose their own in the house and replace the guard. Well, and she very nearly jammed as well, which would have compounded the disaster, but it's not really a disaster, but it is a corner guard the Japanese can use. So quite wide. It'll be interesting to see if Japan can actually hide this behind cover. The way that the rocks finish, it's going to be very difficult to bury and keep it protected. We'll look for a split time on this rock. Rocks have been running about 14, 14 and a half seconds for draw weight. 13.4 there. Well, the sweeping there was to try and get it to curl, but it needed to actually slow down as well. So that's with the new style and the new uh, type of sweeping, uh, directional sweeping they've been trying. You've got to know, make sure the weight there. There, just a little misjudgment. Had to let up. Because even if uh, it doesn't do you any good where it sits, if it's out of the rings. And this time, Olivieri is able to get rid of that corner guard. So Japan will try to put it back. Bring the play back away from the center line. Well, trying to get that guard, that is a long corner guard. The swing that we've seen, that could be tough to really use. Look Very much so. There we see Brian Gray, the Italian coach. And next to him, Alberto Minardi is actually the father of Federica Apollonio. They're I think it's alternate. pretty tough as a parent to actually yeah. watch, your, watch your son or daughter play. Yeah, and their alternate is uh, Alberto's wife and Federica's mother, Claudia Alvera. So a real family affair. Dad even more. The regular third with uh, Federica is her sister in Georgia, who's been to the Worlds a few times. You see J.D. Lind 
Japanese coach. He's there, especially important. Make sure you pick out the right stones. You get them in the right place. And beside him, we saw Japanese alternate Mari Motohashi, who has an enormous amount of international experience. And so for this young Japanese team, she's a very important uh, big sister, almost a stabilizer for this team. Well, continuing to go hard, try and get those corner guards out in front. Just uh, behind the Canada logo in the ice. Of course, the world's here in Canada. The host site as it was in 2010, Swift Current. And the people here have done an outstanding job. It's a city of 15,000 but the volunteer turnout for this event has been amazing. Second draw here today. Fantastic crowds, knowledgeable crowds. They love their curling here in this part of Canada. Really is the heartland. And sometimes you see when the host country not out there, the crowd might be a little bit less, but not much less than what it was earlier today. Of course, Canada, well, one of the four teams with a bye in this draw. Well, the fans here know they're curling, and they know that this is a world-class event. You've got the likes of Eve Muirhead from Scotland. You've got the likes of Vinia Felcher, world champion from Switzerland. So they know they're going to be entertained. Got world champions, Olympic medalists, European champions, Pacific Asian curling champions. Trying to get this one in behind. Good sweeping there. Yoshida able to drag it as far as she did. So if you joined us earlier today for, the, for our first game, now you're seeing in action this Japanese front end. They may be small, but boy, they're powerful. They can really sweep that stone and they can really alter the path of it as well. We see the Japanese back end of Fujisawa and Yoshida. <laughs> Need this one to curl. Well, using that outside sweeper, try and get it to it, but unable to get that curl to get to it is Maria Gaspari. So Japan an opening now after that miss. So that's when as a front end player, you see the benefit of all that hard work. They really finished that last stone to half bury it and it was just enough to generate the miss. Here we see the directional sweeping, just trying to get that to curl a little bit more, but no, just passed on the high side. Apollonia disappointed. But a great chance here for the Japanese to try and secure their two. So split the house, get your deuce. Or set up your deuce. Yep. Old time curling, split the house. We want to get this to at least the T-line to try and remove the chance of a double takeout. Again, we see great brushing from the Japanese. And they get it out to the wide side. So a big decision here for Apollonio. She's facing two. She was looking at the freeze, the corner freeze on the shot rock. Only problem with that shot is if you're a little bit heavy, you introduce the chance of a three. She could play it really conservatively and just remove the second shot. That way you're guaranteed of not dropping three, but you're probably going to drop two. So brave play here from the Italians. Well, 
But really, as long as she has a piece of the eight foot somewhere in front of that shot rock, she probably cuts Japan down to a two. Yeah, may get in her head with missing that last one, not worrying, wanting to touch that guard, but still need to make this one. Otherwise, could get in some trouble and give up that three. That's, that's right, Luke. There's probably about a one or two foot shot tolerance on this, and that's about it. They really want this one to curl. The weight looks pretty good, but they want a piece of that yellow. Small bounce, and that was the risk. Yeah, he'd rather be a little bit short, and the weight was not bad, but they just had to wait on line. Took the sweepers out of it, and now a chance for Japan to strike first with three in the second. Some great opportunity here for Team Japan. This was all set up by that great sweeping job of the Japanese front end. Burying that come around, making increasing the degree of difficulty for the Italians. And now Satsuki Fujisawa has an outturn hit to try and score three. So Fujisawa, final stone. Not much to this one, just a light clean from them. They'll stick that one around, and there's the three for Team Japan. We'll see the high fives and the smiles all around as Team Japan strikes first. They're up three through two. So here's that last shot, the second end. Japanese skip, Satsuki Fujisawa with a fantastic opportunity. Nice control weight. Nice, nice, nice. Three, three, three. It is, and one that we don't see them really have to work overly hard as, as a sweeping duo. We've seen them really make an impact in that one. You like it when you can just a nice light clean, ready if you need to, but there wasn't the need to have to hold that one, just a very well thrown stone. That's right, Luke. So the directional sweeping can help, and uh, the Japanese are very, very good at switching one sweeper to the other on those down weight hits. But as you say, if you throw it well, then that makes the sweeper's job pretty easy. There, tight center line guard. Japan. Not sure if they were intending to bring that one in or leave it short with a three-point lead. It's well, out it's, in front. It is out in front. It's quite tight to the rings, though. So if it was a mistake, then it's something that they can correct pretty easily with a short run back. Chinque's T-line, trying to bury this stone now. And 
Rafa is good, and it is. It, it, it gets about half and not wasting any time. Looks like the run back for lead stones. This is one of these shots where an either or is a good result. You make the run back fantastic. If not, you at least clear it away. Well, Yurika Yoshida, the rare peel for the lead. Makes it well, look easy. You wouldn't have known that. As sticks it, leaves the guard, leaves their own in behind. Great shot. So right away, the Italians are back under pressure. They dropped a three in that second end, trying to get something back here. Played that come around, but that great run back by Yoshida means the Italians once again are chasing. Of course, still lead stones. They can't go up and peel the guard. Well, they're hoping to leave it short with it not curling. Jump over and look at Germany and Korea in their first action here at the event. Germany with the Redstones. Uh, Daniela Drendel, the skip of this German team. An opportunity here, multiple points for Germany to start things off after a blank first. Of course, last time the event was here, Germany was victorious, but it was Andrea Schopp and not her this year, it's an open drop. Drendel, and right into the forefoot, so it is three for Germany in that second end. So Germany, like Japan in our feature game, strikes first. And we're seeing lots of rocks in play, lots of offense, which is what we like to see. Well, interesting call here by Italy. Very aggressive call. And those yellow stones out in front, and the dangerous ones for the team with the hammer. The Italians perhaps thinking they need to gamble to get back into this game. But it's still early. Um, Big scrub, got to get past the front, gets by. And they go probably a little too far. Once they got by, could have got off. Yeah. It's popped out the other side, and it's probably something that the Japanese could just pick on the outturn if they wanted. But you see Fujisawa saying, I'm not crazy about all these front stones. Uh, look at this sweep here to get this one by. Almost right out of her hand they went. Nice job by the Italian sweepers. And carrying it all the way into the back of the eight foot. Yumi Suzuki, the outturn. Really quiet wait. Wow. What a sweep there. Right out of her hand. That's big time. Great shot. Team shot. Eureka Yoshida. And we see on the replay Yoshida going coast to coast on that one, sneaking it by the guard. Great, great job. Pardon me, it was Chinami as opposed to Eureka. <laughs> Both Yoshidas, but. Got to give credit where credit's due, and Tsunami able to hold that one. Italians trying to follow it down, sneak by that center guard. A little hit and a flop, but it pops out through the other side. Well, it just rolls off. Still shot stone that one top of the house for the Japanese side. A little biter on the back for the Italians. That might come in handy if they get a chance to 
play a shot for a two or three, but yes, the Japanese have still got shot. That stone in the back 12 is just enough to be annoying. So the Japanese will try to deal with it. It's a good call by the Japanese. After you score three, you really don't want to give your chance opponents any kind of a chance to score a multiple point. Yeah, make the hit. And won't be able to stick around, just rolls out. But objective, get rid of that red stone. So Apollonio again indicating the come around. In turn, draw around that left-hand guard, tight to the rings. As we've seen, these stones really finish hard, so even though that guard is extremely close to the house, you can absolutely bury behind it. Here's Stefania Minardi. Well, they've seen this path a couple times now, so expect this to be pretty close. Out in the weeds a little bit, so I'm wondering if they didn't leave it a little bit long. And I thought they'd be closer than that. That one out in front and... Haven't really been able to play the aggressive shot, try and uh, make a shot to be offensive and score some extra points. Yeah. Just that extra rock width of path fooled the Italians a little bit. There's Chinami Yoshida. This one's really going sideways. That one really went on them. They thought they were going to be okay. and Just leaves another guard out in front and still life for Italy to try and set up an end. You, you not try and get all three back, just make one good draw and that'll help set up a deuce. The Italians would be delighted to score a deuce in this end. Rock needs to curl. Small wick. Rolls into the top 12 foot. Not a bad position, but Japan stays shot. Now did it roll even maybe a hair too far that it takes that, makes that tap more difficult? Well, as long as that yellow rock's there, she could angle that one in now and use the other yellow one as a catcher, but the Japanese know that that red stone's a danger stone, so they're going to have to deal with it somehow. But you've got to be pretty precise here. You can see how close they'd have to get to the guard to get to the nose. And if she floats it a little bit, yeah, she hits the outside of the stone, she's going to jam. Well, dangerous position. Don't want to leave it for your opponent. And forces the yeah, trickier you'd, shot. Yeah, you'd be pretty, tra to, pretty brave to try a guard on this shot. Could try the double raise, but again, that's a high risk shot. Satsuki Fujisawa. I'll get by the front. Wow. And they do just papering that second guard. Do they ever play it fine? My gosh, they had plenty of room and then. We're trying to sweep it for the curl, and then at the last moment thought, uh-oh, we're going to catch that back one. Let's watch on the replay. Then they switch just to try and keep it straight, almost rubbing that guard, which would have been disastrous. Watch how close they come to the guard. I think there was a spark there. <laughs> well, that's the, uh, the 2016 way of sweeping, is you get the, try and get the curl and then hold it at the end. Yeah, but once you get that stone starting to break, it's awfully hard to get it to stop. But they judged it perfectly, and Italy's in some trouble here. 
All of those yellow stones in front of that four-foot circle belong to Japan. Italian skip, Federica Apollonio trying to come around. Well, they've had some struggles here in this third end, trying to get it going, trying to mount some offense. And this is a tough, tough shot. Well, all three, the Italians on it to try and get it around that yellow and won't be able to. And that's what made it tough because she had to come really wide to get around that one and into the forefoot. Very low tolerance for error. Now there's the urgency the Italians going to try and get it around. So the weight was pretty close, but she had to go really, really wide to try and get around that stone in the eight foot. So now just a bit of a hack weight, bumper weight shot. And they want this on the nose, Hans? Nose or even a little bit on the outside just to cut off that pass. It's a nice shot. Now to lie three. So big decision now for the Italians. She throws the double at that to cut them down. Japan will still steal one. They've got that one on the left-hand side of our shot, still biting the 12 foot. So we can see Stefania Minardi setting the room way out there on the wings. And Federica Apollonio is going to have to try and draw way out there, hook it around that stone in the top of the 12 foot and get a piece of the white almost a piece of the blue to try and score a point. Here we can see the Italian bench. Some concern on their faces. This is a very difficult shot. Well, going out on the wide side, outside of the rings. See what the weight difference is on this as well. Sometimes you think you may have to throw a bit more going wide. So they think it's hot. They think it's got lots of weight. It's by the guard. Will it stop? This one looks pretty good. Curls in nicely. What a clutch shot from Apollonio. Brilliant. Very nice. Uh, had struggled with finding the draw weight. And there she shows it. Gets the back of the eight foot. Scores one. They're on the board. Down 3-1 now after three ends. Well, third end is a 3 nothing score for Japan. They lie three. And this is what Federica Apollonio is facing. And Hans, would you have wanted to throw this one going out wide? Boy, oh boy, it's a big guess for the weight because you're going so wide, but they judge it absolutely perfectly. 
That's a literal game saver, drawing against three all the way around those guards, coming to rest in the back of the eight foot. She could have been down six zip, but the Italians are still in this game, and that's what you get uh, asking for from the skip. Pull yourself out of the fire every once in a while, and Federica Apollonia did that. You need to make those sometimes, and take the criticism when you miss them, but uh, you get the uh, the praise when you make that type of shot. And now we see the center guard. Japan still with the lead and control, up two with the hammer. Don't doesn't look like they're going to try and go behind the center. I think it's keeping things away from the center of the house. Generate your offense. Avoid steals more so than even scoring. Well, that's right, Luke. In spite of that great shot by the Italians, the Japanese are still two up. They've got the hammer, and so they don't want to get sucked into playing a game that is risky for them. They're still in control early in the game, so this is a conservative play. They're just drawing it to the wing, away from that guard. And they use all of the rings there. That one goes edge of the 12-foot. Well, Fujisawa with another s smile over on that one. Yeah, that's what I say when I throw a draw to the T-line. It goes to the back 12. I say that's why they make the rings round. Quattro <laughs> Cinque, it's about top four, top eight. Tell you what, Luke, Italian's a great language, isn't it? I mean, it's just, <laughs> I could listen to sweeping calls all day. Yeah, it is definitely a, a lot easier on the ears than, uh, than in other languages. Goes back four foot. They know they want to like to get another one. More important, they want to get that one buried. They flirt so close with those guards, able to come down and just tap that one back. It's just amazing. The it's tolerance. like they don't even worry about it. It's like walking a tightrope. Look at this. They're communicating the weight. Weight's up there with the indication. Okay, it needs to curl a little bit more. Okay, now we'll just back it up just a little bit and oh, we'll squeak by that guard again. <laughs> it's fantastic. And get to the nose of that one that was dead buried. See 66% in their first game today. Chiara Oliveira. Roll it in. Just touch that yellow over. Very nice. Gets it out from behind the guard. Real good. tough to make that double, but. No, that's about as good a result as you could get on that inside roll. There we see the contact point. About half of the rock spins it across and just hip checks that yellow one sideways and importantly exposes it out from behind that guard. There's Yumi Suzuki. Japan lies two. Well, it is Japan with the hammer, so Italy can't afford to just play the straight, uh, straight draw. They got to realize they have the other ones in the house, making it tough to be aggressive to steal this way. It's a dilemma when you get behind early, because part of you wants to be a little aggressive to try and get yourself back on level terms, but. If you get aggressive too early, you can get scorched and take yourself right out of the game. Well, 
hits, rolls the other way, rolls out. What do you think? Do you think they go the appeal or draw to the open side? Well, looks like Fujisawa is electing to go old school curling, split the house, try to get your two that way. And with the control that they've shown us getting around guards to remove stones, that center guard is far enough off the rings where she feels like if the Italians go around it that they could still get to the stone. Want to bring it parallel with that other stone to take away the chance of a double takeout. Very nicely done. Well, both deep in the rings. And here's the here's a key shot now. So we talked about the Japanese were happy to give the Italians the shot around the center guard, and they're going to take it. Stefania Minardi being asked to throw a come around draw. The risk, of course, if you don't make it great, is that the Japanese could just access it themselves and set up a three, but this is looking pretty good. But there's that late movement that comes out. It is probably three quarters open, at least. And we talked about how much those stones curl, so the Japanese were thinking, we'll give you the shot at that one to try and come around and hide. As Luke said, from that overhead shot, we can see on the out turn that the Japanese can probably see half of that rock. There is the risk of a jam. If she hits half on the outside, she could drive it on her own. Bit, bit of a discussion among the players, the weight to throw. So a delicate shot here for the Japanese, but if they can execute, they could set up another big end. I'll try and get as close to nose. And well again, played. just good weight control. Just day one, but for a young Japanese team, Fujisawa in her second world championship, they're uh, playing like experienced veterans. And they're playing with confidence. They've really got a high degree of confidence in each other, obviously. They're communicating really well out there. Constant updates about the weight high confidence in their sweeping ability, so early in the tournament, but the Japanese are starting really well. Well, trying to get a couple, catch them. It's gonna jam. And, and jams. That's an unlucky break, because you're probably gonna get rid of one. Now leaves it. And yeah, just slightly quiet wait to try and rattle rocks too much. Perfecto. Now there's an interesting call here from the Japanese. They're saying, okay, <laughs> we can just rip that center guard now and lock away our three. So instead of really going for a fourth point to try and go for the jugular, playing their percentages here. Now yeah, we'll peel the guard. What are you going to do to try and cut it down late in the end? We're into skip stones now. Got to make a double and get out of some trouble. So the double attempt there as we jump over sheet C. Germany got that three in the second. And last stone here, fourth stone thrower, Anchi Gim. And this Korean side could be a sleeper. Some Higher expectations as they know they're the only country qualified for the Olympics so far as the host nation facing a bunch. Got to get by, got to hold the shooter, tap it back, get their one. 
Very nicely done. So Korea on the board, but down 3-1. Meanwhile, Federica Apollonio unable to stick around. Peels it out. Japan still lying too. Yeah, so an interesting choice here for the Japanese about where you try to put this third rock. We're going to leave some kind of a double. Now we see Apollonio's attempted at the double. Just over curls, gets half the stone, rolls across the face. So if you're going for three, you could try to th draw it into the middle of the back of the eight foot, but then that introduces the chance of a freeze, which could get the Italians out of the end. So Fujisawa, I think, is electing just to throw an out turn. Probably top eight foot. Just get it in there, make a double a little more tricky. Make the double or you almost have to roll out to make it. Well, that's exactly right, Luke. So the angles now are exactly that. So if Federica makes the double, it'll leave Japan a draw for two. There we see from our overhead. To make the double now, she'll have to hit outside the stone. Just off nose, and I think unless she's very fortunate, her shooter's likely to roll over to the edge of the 12 foot. But Japan does have the hammer here, so this is a bit of damage control for Italy. They won't be happy to drop two, but they sure don't want to drop three. Yeah, I got into an aggressive trying to go for the steal and big weight here. Apollonio, her final shot. On it the whole way. Enough, make the double. Noses it, sits shot stone. But another shot for a second three of this game. You saw the low numbers there. That was the percentage she threw in the afternoon game against Russia, an 8-2 loss. So there we see Janami Yoshida holding the brush. That's the target for her skip, Satsuki Fujisawa, with another chance for a hit for three. Oh, it was a hit. Back in the second end for three. Here it's a hit again. And this time, Sweeper's doing some work, trying to get some curl. Gets enough to hit and stick, making it look easy. This Japanese team, full of confidence and full of smiles as they get their second three of the game and lead 6-1 through four ends of play. Here we see on the replay, control weight shot, good sweeping. She has the whole house to roll to. It comes to rest in the eight foot and it's another big three point end for the Japanese.
Welcome back inside the Credit Union Iplex. Luke Coley here with Hans Frauenlaub. A 6-1 Japan lead, full control. They just seem to be full of confidence. Brooms going down, they're making shots and using their sweepers. And just things are not going the way for the Italians that they wanted to start this world championship. Yeah, it's definitely a long road back for Team Italy here, Luke. You're right. And Japanese team, a young team, but playing with huge confidence. Saturday night here in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. Draw two of the 2016 Ford World Women's Curling Championships. In Tokoro, Japan, of course, it's Sunday morning. About 11 a.m. And in Cortina, Italy, it's about 3 in the morning. So the Italian curling fans who are up here well, watching for, their team. Uh, sticking in there with us. Absolutely. But yeah, a very impressive performance so far by this Japanese team. And they played a different type of game than they did earlier. Earlier today, it was a although a very aggressive. Here, they picked their spots when to be aggressive. They, they Last time they peeled the center line guard, said we're not gonna get in any trouble, and then a mistake and from the Italian side allowed them to get that three. And it still paid off for a three. They're making good choices, playing good high percentage shots, and importantly, they're executing them really well. But we still got six ends to play, so even though it's going to be tough for the Italians, mentally they have to approach this end like we need to. Just get your two every time with the play hammer. Get your two, grind it out. It's the only way they're going to get back into this game. You can't get them all back at once. Maria Gaspari will try to go around uh, the corner guard. Twenty-four-year-old lead, Maria Gaspari. Now well, trying to get that one as far to get it buried. So we look over. Germany, Korea, three-one the score, and Germany with the hammer. Daniela Drendel looking to try and blank the end by the guard, just by the guard. Get it out, and that one will spin, spin back, back at the end. <laughs> See that how many times as it spins and sticks. <laughs> Not what she wanted, but she'll take the one. Four, one after four. <laughs> Meanwhile, Japan continues to make every shot in that one well, perfect. Well, well, they're putting on a clinic, Luke. I mean, that's... Uh... Whether you call for the straight peel... And then that works out. When things are going, things continue yeah. to go your way. What do you do if you're Italy now? How do you? It, it's got to be tough to try and stay, uh, stay focused. Try to stay it does. positive. You have to stay really, really patient, and you need to have a lot of rocks in play. You have to be really comfortable with having a lot of rocks in play because you're going to need them to stay in the game. So you're going to have to take some risks, but it's mostly being patient. And that can be really hard to do when you're down five and you're facing some stones, but sometimes you just have to wait for your one chance in the end to try and get your deuce. Yeah, and a nice uh, double is made, but everything pretty open. Yeah, Japan won't mind eliminating stones. What do you think? Do you go open the hip... Uh, Go hit the open one? What they're looking at, lining up the slash. Could do. Uh, I think you've got a chance, you know, for Japan right now, it's about stone elimination, so they can deal to this guard and maybe double off the one at the back as well. Yumi Suzuki. Oh, 
Oh, uh, gonna be close and <laughs> better than close, perfect. Well, just judging by the nervous giggles of the Japanese girls, they know that things are going well for yeah, them right just now. Just look at this, like No, oh. never any panic, just a yeah, just a nice clean, perfect throw. Yeah, just another routine 15 foot angle cross house double. Well, trying to weld this one on. Italy comes back with a very nice freeze. That's a great shot. Olivieri. Just got to keep making shots. I don't know if you can get rid of that one. That's a great shot. You can move it, but you probably can't get it out of play. You might be able to reposition it off the pin maybe, but that's a great shot. Super shot there from our overhead. Fully covering the pin, just a tiny gap between the stones, but... Short of dynamite, I don't think that stone <laughs> is getting out of there. Looking for the nose hit on this one then? Yeah, that's the second best option is just beak it and put it, reverse the, reverse the story. So now for Italy, how do you get two? There we see the precision of this Japanese team. Now and it's it welded. Angles are good here. Would you ever think of trying to guard it for a couple of stones? You might do. I, I do like this call. Um, if she plays back eight foot weight and hits about half of the rock, she can just push that red one deeper in the eight foot, spill her own off to the wing and maybe get a two going. Another alternative would be just to try and, uh, as you say, guard it. The angle crucial here, come down, little tap. Very nice, just moves him a bit and very nice. Gets it off that back one. She would have loved that back stone to go another six inches. Because then the angle of the freeze would have meant that the Japanese couldn't clip that back one out when they're throwing at the top two. The way that they're staggered right now, I think there's a chance that the Japanese may be able to pick out that back red one. The drag effect will definitely come into play here. Drag effect is what happens when the angle of the stone causes the backward stone to go in a different angle. Well, there it is. Perfect example of it. The two stones welded will act as one, and now That's just right. that one stone back button. Happy Japanese fans in the crowd. Their team is roaring right now. <laughs> <laughs> and they are having fun. Body language definitely. Here we see the drag effect. Look at the contact point. That yellow backstone goes straight into that red rock. Uh, fails to get there for the uh, freeze and sets top 12 foot. Japan doesn't have to take any risks at this point. They, the five point lead. Exactly right, no fooling around. If the game was tighter, you might think about throwing a guard here, but up five, no reason to take that kind of risk at all.
Well, hit rolls off to the side. Japan continuing to control play. Line two. They're obviously really comfortable throwing that board weight, control weight. They've got high confidence that they can control the rock with sweeping. It's a pleasure to see. Yeah, the Japanese team on a bit of a roll and first team to win the Pacific Asian Championships for Japan, Japanese women in 10 years. Know they can come in, they can compete in this field. Well, trying to make the roll. Nice shot. Apollonio makes the roll and again, forcing Japan to try and come after him. Here we see Yoshida holding her breast just to see how much they can see at the other end. Here we see the hit and roll. Very, very nicely done. So maybe for the first time in the game, we see a little bit of pressure being applied to the Japanese. This is a tough shot. She can see maybe a third, maybe a quarter of this stone. Plus she might play the, uh, the yellow one back initially with, yeah, with the, the distance between those two. The option of the run back is there, but we've seen the confidence they have in being able to just squeak by guards with that downweight hit. We saw Yoshida tapping her foot. That says to me that they're going to be playing hack weight at this. Delicate shot. So up to the sweepers now. Yoshida and Suzuki. Get past their top one. They Whoa. get by. I think they feathered it going by, Luke, and they still made the shot. Wow. They got a good chunk of that red stone. Well, we'll see on our replay. I'm almost sure that they actually rubbed the guard going by. She played hack weight instead of that board weight that she was playing, and I think slightly less weight, fooled the sweepers and the readers a little bit, curled a little bit more than they expected. Let's well, watch this really you thought closely. thought it hit it. <laughs> oh, man. If she didn't hit that rock, she got awfully close to it. Wow, well, the jump up, hoping to get it by. and Wow. Now forcing Federica Apollonio, her final stone to hit and stick for one. Hit, does it stick? It continues to roll, and it will stop just in time. And it is one red for Italy. But what a performance this Japanese team is putting on. Not allowing Italy to get anything going. We're 6-2 into the fifth end break of this one. Well, second end of this one, and miss by Italy trying to go cut the end down, and that leaves. Sasuke Fujisawa, chance, the out turn. Hit and stick to score three for the first score of the game. And nice all around as they pick up the triple. An early 3 nothing lead. Trying to bounce back and Japan lying three, those yellows at the top of the house going out to the wide side of the sheet. Federica Apollonio, the out turn. Trying to get the single point and a beautiful draw gets past the front. 
perfect judgment of weight to throw to the forefoot. Apollonio gets on the board with a single, but right back in the fourth. Japan, pressure continues, and Italy can't make the double. Leaves another open hit to get her three points one more time. And can be all smiles when you're scoring threes with the hammer. And that's what Japan's done twice this game. And they lead 6-2 with the hammer coming out of the fifth end break. <laughs> Keeping you up to date. The other games, Russia and Finland. And the Redstones there belonging to Russia. Finland. Una Costa. Trying to play the intern draw to get that one. It has to get to the button here in order to get a single point. Does this one have the legs and enough weight to get there? The sweepers try valiantly, but doesn't look like it's gonna get there. It comes up short and a steal of one. And that leaves Russia with a three nothing lead. As you see there at the bottom on sheet D, sheet B, Sweden up 2-1 after five ends. They got the lone deuce of the game, just two scores in that one, and three blanks. Well, Germany leads Korea 4-1. Fifth end to play. Here it's draw two, 2016 Ford World Women's Curling Championship. Center guards on the center line. We join in the first. Okay. So two center guards. Try a hog line, hog line, hog line guard first. Hog line guard first and then draw around midway guard. Hog line guard, one meter guard. Okay? Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. I would play eight ends anyway to practice. And we'll practice this system now. So let's play eight ends and we just do it. Doesn't matter the score, okay? All right, good luck, girls. Sorry, we should have done this earlier. Well, you see the two threes on the board. And that's the big difference. It's up to you. It's still early, right? So if you still want to try, you can finish early. But So maybe early, you can be a little aggressive, but then bail early. Right? Yeah, still, still use this chance to get used to the brushes, right? And the line calls. So. Right, let's go. I don't have my accreditation, but can I get back in if I run to the back? Well, that Coach J.D. Lind, I think they might let you in. You have a jacket. Yeah, it's got your name on it, and it says Japan, so I think they will. But here we see the shooting percentage is, again, a dominant display by the Japanese. Team shooting percentage of 90. That's really, really strong. Draws and hits, 88%, 92%. The Italians are playing solidly in, you know, in the mid-70s, but... Japan, you know, indicative of the score, 6-2, to two, and really firmly in control of this game. And for Japan, they had a, a two stolen points in their first half of the game. They still have a zero up there for stolen points. A couple different uh, listen-ins on those conversations of, of how they want to do it. Both sides want to continue to work, work on things. Uh, but Japan, they want to work on it, but they don't want to get too far in and, and give up a big score or give up a steal. That's right. Both teams can experiment. Uh, we did hear the Italians talking about trying to throw two center guards in this end. But also recognizing the game situation and if things go badly, they want to play at least eight ends even if they're far behind. It is early in the week and you do want to use every opportunity that you can to get comfortable with the ice and the playing conditions. And likewise with the Japanese, they can attack, but... If things look a little bit sketchy, they can pull the pin and bail out. And that's the guard they wanted to 
as a high guard. It is higher in the house, or out in front, pardon me. Rather put it up by those first level of decals as opposed to pass them. Working on rock placement, trying to get them in the right spot. Get separation. So just according to the plan prescribed by coach Brian Gray, the Italians are going to throw another center guard. See the numbers in the San Maria Gaspari, 85 on this game, a little lower in the tournament, obviously still early in the tournament, so just their second game. They talked about working on a few things. This is their second game of the event, but they also will only play one game tomorrow, so not going to have as much time tomorrow or game time before you get into two games a day, Monday through Thursday. Really got to work to try and get this one to the center line. Well, she had an interesting expression on release. So I'm wondering if there might have been something under the stone or she didn't seem happy with it at release point. And it sat out wide, but it is a second guard. At this point in the game, here we can see on the replay. You can see her looking down at the stone and with that kind of expression. So it was almost like she felt, it, she was felt it grabbed before she released it. So the Jap Japanese working on their tick game. And I, I like the call because of where that other one was. Now you can line up a, a, a double on that, a double peel possibly. Open up the center line and a well executed shot. Yep. Corner guards now for the Japanese, which suits them just fine. Seventy-eight percent. Chiara Olivieri. Sixty-six on the tournament percentage wise. Well, it just slides to the top of the house. It was going to be able to be removed either way. Good numbers, as we'll see for the Japanese side. Gets rid of that stone, it's on the center line. Looking to keep that clear. So this game is going pretty textbook so far for the Japanese. Well, textbook, you want to try and score two with the hammer. They've been able to get threes with the hammer and get forces. Yeah, they got the extra special textbook. Yeah, the bonus points. The Italians doing all they can to generate something for a steal. Japan not worried about trying to make a double peel. Just get rid of the one. So use that directional sweeping, the one sweeping with the curl, try and get some curl at the end on it, and peel that one out. A 
68%. Stefania, 72%. Early going in this tournament. Two or three, so they think this is a guard that's quite close to the rings. Well, another guard. Yeah, and Let's this see. is a better end from the Italians in terms of setting it up. And we talked earlier in the game about confidence, and curling is such a game of confidence. Even down four points, the Italians will take some confidence away from just being able to make good, solid execution. The Japanese, on the other hand, will be looking to close this game out. Yeah, straight peel on that. It's just executing your shots, it doesn't really impact whether the other team makes the great tick shot. You've got to go put your guard out in front. That's absolutely right. You can only control what you can control. You can't control what your opponent does. Another nice guard there by the Italians. At some point, if you're Japan, you're pretty tempted to go around one of these things, but I think there'll be one more peel here. Yeah, wait and get into skip stones, see what Italy does if they try to draw around the corner. Nice. We're hearing that word a lot from the Japanese tonight. Well, Italy looks like with the broom will try and come around now. Italy at World Championship, they've played at 16 World Championships, but the best result, just fifth. So trying to improve upon that. Better than a fifth means you're getting into the playoffs. Here they had a, a long way to qualify. They were the eighth. European nation to qualify, winning uh, in the Europeans. They have two groups. They won the B group, and then there's a challenge, a best two of three, and they beat Norway, the eighth-ranked team in the A group, best two of three. And that's a big accomplishment to really scrap your way into a world championship that way. We mentioned earlier that the World Championships of 2016 and the World Championships of 2016, 2017 rather, serve as qualification events for the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, Korea. So every game matters. Every team here will earn Olympic ranking points. Whichever team is the champion this week will earn 14 points. Going all the way down to one point for the last place team in this event. But let's have a look at another game here. Russia's leading Finland 3-0. Una Kausta facing Russian Stones, playing an interim draw. Yeah, hasn't been able to really mount much offense and facing multiple. Didn't look all that uh, confident with the delivery. But just needs to get into the 8-foot and will be able to get on the board in this one. And able to drag that one. Just by the top red. No <laughs> worries there. They'll get to the eight foot and an unnecessarily great come around. Yeah, able to get there, get their one. So three one Russia leading Finland after five. And it's been every time sort of look over and see that. It's been Russia in control. So we see saw the triple digit percentage for Fujisawa. Mighty impressive. Hard to do better than that. Comes just towards the T-line, just to rest on the T-line. Nice weight control. And now Federica Apollonia thinks we have to try the corner freeze this time. We saw her attempt this shot a couple of ends ago. 
was one foot heavy and really paid the price. Gave Japan a hit for three. There we see from our overhead. That brush head is where they want the stone to come to rest. On an angle right in front of the shot rock. Very tough shot. Federica Apollonio. Her final shot at the sixth end, trailing 6 2. Got to have the perfect line on this. They'll come down, oh, tap bravo. it a bit. I think Japan is still shot, but boy, what a great attempt there by Apollonio. Yeah, just had to go a little bit to hold the line and able to make the little tap, but had to tap it a bit further to get shot. So, so close. Again, she had such tiny shot tolerance on that shot. She needed to get an angle freeze to get shot. So Japan immediately says, okay, we'll try and draw for two. So Japan leads 6-2, final rock here in end number six. Satsuki Fujisawa playing the out turn, drawing for two. You'll get a good look at the communication here. They'll talk wait in line. Now just asking for this one to stop in the forefoot. And it will use just all about of all of it that they needed. And it is two, so another multiple point score for Japan. That's three of them with the hammer. They are being hammer efficient. And they lead 8-2 now after six ends of play. Well, welcome back inside the Credit Union IPlex 2016 Ford World Women's Curling Championship. Luke Coley, Hans Frauenlaub. You don't normally see this this early in the game. Seventh end, throwing the first of lead stones through. But Japan controlling this game and scoring multiple points with the hammer three times and two forces. Italy is talking about working on things, trying to get a feel for it, get a feel where to put the broom and all that, whether down big or not. So they're down six. Well, we've talked earlier in the game, Luke, about the Japanese team making good sound, high percentage choices. And in this situation with a commanding lead, that's a good percentage play. About the only way for the Japanese to get in trouble from here is to drop a three or something in this end. Oh. 
So corner guard goes out. And Eureka Yoshida. Throw this one through and they're using it though to make sure uh, they see a spot in the ice. They're yeah, they work every shot well. If you just look at the weight on that shot, that's pretty close to the tick weight that she would throw trying to move a center guard. Gaspari trying to come around that corner guard. Well, in making that play early, thought maybe put another corner up. Yeah, I was just starting to say, Luke, I think at this point for the Italians, they're looking for small moral victories. And by making this kind of play, that says to me that let's try to work this end to try and score a you know, solid two. We'll do that and see, check in Germany and Korea. An Chi Gim, fourth stone thrower for this Korean side. And a tough battle down four. Hit here, try and get two back. Cut into that lead, make it 5-3 after six ends. Yeah, that was an important deuce for that young Korean team. Well, and the last time they were at a world championship in Canada, and uh, it was, it's been a bit since it was 2012 when they were here, but they went on a late run, got hot late, got into the playoffs, and lost a bronze medal game to Canada. So they're definitely one. See how they start early in the week. Maybe they can get on a roll early. Definitely have had the, uh, the funding, Olympic funding, it's helping their program. No doubt, the Koreans are making an enormous effort to prepare their athletes for the 2018 Winter Olympics. And Korean curling is going from strength to strength. They're really making an effort. Well, I was just about to ask. <laughs> Which one do you want to go? Do you go and rip the guard or do you go and chase the one in the house? Yes, and the players down at the hack end were pretty determined that let's rip that card. That was a real good look at the, uh, the playing surface that they're on. It's a great shot. And that's a great shot. So we talked about the Italians looking for a moral victory here. So we see Federica Apollonio saying, let's go Ken Watson curling and split the house. <laughs> Try to trade shots for our two. Sweepers are working it hard. They'd like to get it to the tee line, but the indication was cuatro cinque, which is sort of top 12, top eight foot. So they're really working this one hard. They've got a piece of the rings though, well swept. Japan doesn't, as a, a team with a six point lead, they're not gonna go hard at the double, just try and roll it over. Just close the house up a bit, that's right. So if they can three quarter this and roll it over around the center line, they'd be pretty happy. Shinami Yoshida. Well, can't quite jump it over. We'll sit top 12 foot second shot. So a bit of a chance here for the Italians. They can 
Suck another one around that Japanese stone. We can see Apollonio indicating exactly that. Stefania Minardi, third player, was lead the 2012 World Juniors for Federica Apollonio. So many of these players have had World Junior experience and World University Games experience. It's a real breeding ground. Seeing that real development from that level and getting to the, this stage on the world stage, but that's, you talk to him, it is still such a different event going from the junior ranks to the, uh, the world men's or world women's. It absolutely is. The uh, level of strategy is different, so the players see a lot of different shots. Pressure gets applied much more quickly. This is, after all, the championship of the world. And here, just the hit. Try and roll over and get shot. Okay, so a little something cooking here for Team Italy. There we see the Italian stone nestled between those two Japanese shots, but they are still shot rock at the back of the eight foot. Apollonio looking to split the house, lie to. Trying to really, get it to the opposite eight foot. Really working it. They want to get this thing to the T line if they can. Might be curling away from the eight foot as well. Running out of rings as it will be fourth shot. Oh, and that's really disappointing for the Italians. That's the slogan when it rains, it pours. Yeah, some nights it's just not going your way. But that was an execution problem. Needed another five feet of weight. But that stone is in the rings. Japan discussing their options. They could try a cross house double on that stone just thrown by Minardi. There we see from our overhead. That redstone is available on the intern. They could play a down weight shot and just remove it. They do run the risk, of course, of clipping their own guard. That's the play, and we see that Yoshida is communicating that if we're going to miss this, we're going to miss it tight. Bump off our own, just roll towards the center line. Because that one came up short, that's probably the smart call here. Well, for Japan, you know, this is really, again, you don't want it, you don't, don't want to give the Italians a chance to score three. But this is a delicate shot. But we've been saying that pretty much all night about this Japanese team. But quite impressive with their ability to play these delicate downweight shots with control. See what uh, Satsuki Fujisawa has. Try and play this quiet way. This has been their bread and butter throughout the game. I think they're close. Clean's always a nice word uh, to hear as they punch that one through. Very nice shot. Nice mm. shot. Hear the word clean, you know it's probably pretty close. 
Yes, as a sweeper, you're always relieved to hear that. Here we see the Japanese shot rock sitting in the back of the eight foot. The Italians still with a chance to get a deuce out of this end. Apollonio can make a hit on the inside of this one. I'm not sure if she's trying a draw or hit and roll, Luke. We'll just have to see on the weight when she comes out of the hack. Looks like an inside hit and roll. Trying to get any sort of protection on this one, any roll, and we'll get it right on the nose. Sit back eight foot. So Satsuki Fujisawa will just try to eliminate this. She'd like to stick around. If she rolls out of the rings, then she would give Apollonio a chance at a very difficult but makeable double for two. So right on the nose, ideally, here? Yep, that would be a great spot. Just cleaning that one right to it. Sits back four foot. Nice. Forces the hand of the Italians to hit for a single point. Had the makings of a deuce, but a draw coming up short. Let that opportunity slip out of their hands. Well, the way this Japanese team is playing, you can't even afford a half miss, otherwise they're going to punish you, and that's what's happened in this end. Last rock of the seventh end for Federica Apollonio, trying to hit and stay for her one. Not cleaning that up, right on the nose. Back yep. forefoot, back button. And it is one for Italy. Inch closer, but need more than just singles with the hammer. They trail 8-3, heading to the eighth end of play. Well, look at the line score and three singles from Italy. Three crooked numbers for Japan. What you want to do with the hammer? No steals in the game. Watching live coverage, Italy taking on Japan. It's draw two from the Ford World Women's Curling Championship in Swift Current, Saskatchewan, Canada. Luke Coley, Hans Frauenlop. And Japan's been an impressive team to play. Italy hasn't been quite sharp enough to mount any offense and that's really the way it's been. Yeah, right from the outset tonight, Luke, the Japanese have uh, applied the pressure and executed really, really well. It's been 
two very impressive performances today by this young Japanese team. We saw earlier on today, if you were with us, they handled Finland rather handily. And here tonight against the Italians, up five playing the eighth. There we see at the lead position, Yurika Yoshida holding a slight advantage in the shooting percentage department. Here, chance to try the tick shot. We'll try and push this one. Can't remove it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See the extra sweeper to try and get it off. Excellent execution. So impressive. <laughs> and another big smile. Well, at the lead position, the lead position has changed so much with the free guard zone and the chance for the leads to play that real, real finesse shot of a tick and execute it gives them a real chance to be in the limelight. I know all members of the Worldwide Front Enders Union would probably agree with me on that one. See this attempt again. They'll try and push that one to the boards without removing it. Indicating that this one might have a little bit more weight. And they move it off the center line. <laughs> Boy, she's making it look really easy, but that is such a difficult shot. Well, you can tell it's a shot they've really worked on and a shot that a lot of teams are now starting to work on even more. Before it was, you threw it in one end maybe. Now you're seeing teams throwing it as a weapon to set up offense. There, great opportunity to work on it. It's an 8-3 game, Japan in full control. Let's move them off, let's keep the center line open. Very much so. Hard work for the sweepers, but they deliver well. This is their second game today. So I'm sure they'll all be feeling it a little bit, but they've all trained really hard for this event. So two, end, two 10 end games again today shouldn't be any kind of a physical stress for these athletes, yeah. but they are working hard out there, no doubt about it. See the advantage for Yumi Suzuki, 84 to 77 percent. She's had lots of these peels in the last couple ends. Gets rid of the center line guard. We look over. Sweden and Scotland, sixth end, and lots of rocks in play, and even your head looking at playing off of that Yellowstone, try and bring two into play. It was a hit and roll by Maria Pritz on her last got shot stone. Now Muirhead, 2013 world champion, catches it too thick and over the top, and a steal of one, so a 3-1 lead for Sweden. After six ends of play. And what a challenging game for both of those teams. Really, really competitive teams with high expectations coming in and they're facing each other first up in their first game of the tournament. Got to play everyone at some point and it just happens right out of the gate. So another guard cleared out. It is a full round robin, as we mentioned. These teams will play 11 games. So you do have to play everybody once. It is the luck of the draw when you face a given team.
Well, both these teams will have the same draw schedule the first two days at least. Uh, they both played earlier. They play right now, and they'll have the morning off and then play draw four tomorrow, the afternoon of three draws tomorrow. Italy gets Finland, while Japan will take on Russia. And it is a long week. 11 games is a long game. Every team, of course, is going to be aiming at making the playoffs. Four teams make the playoffs. And doing the math, that means most years, if you've got playoff aspirations, that usually means you need seven wins to be in the hunt. See the advantage of the numbers there again to the Japanese side, and the scoreboard would tell you that's the case also. So if you're looking for seven wins, if you're a team like Italy and you've lost two games today, and you go back to your hotel tonight and just regroup, come back tomorrow, and you say, we're still in this tournament. You can't lose the tournament on the first day. Likewise, if you're Japan, if Japan can hang on for the win today and they go to bed tonight with two wins in the bank, they'll be saying, well, we can't rest on our laurels. We have to come out tomorrow and go hard because we're still a lot of wins away from being in the hunt for the playoffs. So you try really, really hard as a player not to look ahead in the schedule, but inevitably, at some point, you realize that if you're going to be in it at the end, you're going to have to win a bunch of games. Exactly. There's no two ways around it. Well, just making the decision of which turn to play to get rid of that center line guard. Chanami Yoshida. We'll get rid of it. And the shooter also. Good execution in a situation where maybe you let your guard down a little bit, you relax a bit with a big lead, but still need to go out and make your shots. No, nope, there you are, absolutely staying focused on every shot. And you're ab absolutely right, Luke. It's easy to let your attention wander. But this team is being well coached and they're certainly focused. Playing every shot on its merits. There we see Satsuki Fujisawa looking on. First of skip stones of this eighth end decide to go around the corner guard. Sweepers are saying 5-6, so they think it's around the T-line. Well, nice shot. Still seeing that consistent curl to the wings and able to get around. And look at that, you don't see that very often. Quick, somebody do a screen grab. That's really impressive. 100%. Of course, now we've put the commentator's curse on her. So I was trying not to say shot. the word. I was not trying not to say the word. No, no, I have to say it, so you know. <laughs> and this is not an easy shot. Apollonia nope. made a nice come around. There, there we get go. one more chance. Okay, they'll get my phone out and I'll take a picture of that. Click. There we go. 100%. Put this one right on the corner now. Keep it going. Not bad numbers for Apollonio, but yeah. been faced against perfection. And she's had some straightforward shots, but she's had to make some difficult shots as well, and this one goes in the difficult category. And you no. couldn't carry it down any better and put it in that spot. That is outstanding, Carol. Wow. That's Absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely outstanding. That's just having a good feel and didn't really use her front end. Knew that she could, but just drilled it right on that spot. Fantastic shot. 
So I don't know if the statisticians and the scorers are listening, but you know, you might give that one a five out of four. That was a really, really good shot. I suspect these Japanese players are so in the zone they don't realize at what kind of level they're actually executing. They're just playing shot to shot, just staying in every shot, staying focused, just playing so well. Well, now Apollonio has to follow it down. I have the right angle herself. Looks like it might be a small bump off that shot. Just a little chip. We've seen that a few times. She's yeah. just that you're not far off from that shot. It's the difference, and it's such a punishing and cruel game sometimes because six inches of weight, less, and that's an excellent shot. But because it was just that fraction heavy, she's bumped, she's rolled away, and now it's a fairly straightforward. I say that cautiously for the person who hasn't missed a shot all night. The Japanese can remove this shot. They can score two and pretty much lock this game away. So, final shot, Satsuki Fujisawa. Hit and stick here. Chance to score two again with the hammer. Just cleaning that one up. And, and that's that. a perfect end to a perfect night for Satsuki Fukasawa. That's an outstanding, outstanding play for the Japanese. And the handshakes are out. There they are. A 10-3. Japanese victory and unofficially a perfect game for Fujisawa just phenomenal play by the Japanese team in particular Japanese skip as they improve their record to 2-0 with a 10-3 victory Easy way for Japan to head to sleep tonight knowing they got the morning off. They're playing one game tomorrow and they will be taking on Russia. Another tough task. Well, with our feature game, Japan-Italy being a final, we'll jump over and join Sweden and Scotland. And a 3-2 game with Scotland taking one in seven. It is Sweden with the hammer. They have the Yellowstones, Scotland throwing the red ones. We'll join you as we are midway through their eighth end. It is. Scotland lying one at the moment, two center guards trying to play for a score in this one. And Sweden, Maria Weinström. Yeah! Trying to get both those guards. And will end up killing their own, leaving a couple of guards. 
and kind of a worst case scenario. There's two center line guards, couple stones in the top part of the house, and they're overlapped. Vicky Adams at just 64% on the game. Trying to wrap around those two. I know they get, oh, need to get one in. See if Sweden has to start following them down. It was a tentative start to this game. Lots of blanks in the first five. So we see Maria at 79%. Trying to peel. Maybe get a lucky and get a couple. Just gets the one. Well, the peel here clears that one off the front. You can maybe have a little bit more. Yes. I did get that, guys. I did get that. Just watch. Well, the left-handed throwing Anna Sloan. 75% on the game. Well, they didn't want to slide deep, so that's why they didn't want to bring the sweeping on early. It is Scotland lying four. Christina Bertrup try and get to the nose on this one at 80%. Well, catches it a bit high, was trying to get the late curl on it, unable to do so. Here's the mentality looking at it see from a lot of teams throughout the week is trying to score in the eighth end, trying to score in even ends, especially late in the game. Yeah. Going out, play this. Bianna's out turn. And I don't think she has the weight to get it there. We'll actually come up to the nose of that top one. Missed opportunity now. Well, lots of room past that high guard, but really don't want to roll off and leave the opening still.
Uh, Maria Pretz on the sweep trying to hold the line. Get by the front and tap it back. They will lie what looks like shot stone top button. Well, they've seen this path a few times, thrown a bit more weight, so we'll tighten the ice up. Just wants to move that back four foot. Seventy-seven percent curling on the game. I'll try and move it back four foot, move it far enough to get shot stone. They won't get shot, but it does open up now for them to make a play later if Sweden doesn't get there first. I think Maria trying to get to the inside on this. Trying to get, may not get shot stone. Just a little roll and we'll sit one, two, top button, back button. No raise on any of those because of the overlaps. Well, just so come now to the point where they have to try and draw and get second shot, cut it down. Maria Pritz just made her shot perfect. Now Eve has to be perfect with hers. Wait, they went pretty hard, will come down, and they'll get for second shot. Couldn't do a lot better than that, Luke. No, I wonder if it curls a bit more if they could get shots, don't they? It was they, coming in sideways. They might have had a chance, but... Luckily, been, they had their own to catch on. Exactly, and it would have been disastrous if she would have caught the front stone and just spilled over, so... No room for error there at all. This, is she trying a little angle tap? 
Just throwing her away. <laughs> Put the one in the bank and be happy about it. Especially in the eighth end. Eve was going, and Scotland were going hard to try and get one through a steal. They'll throw it away. And looks pretty clearly it's a yellow there and a single. It will be for Sweden with the hammer and a 4-2 lead now. Two ends remaining in this one. Sweden with the upper hand over Scotland. Well, a little bonus coverage for you as our feature game of Italy and Japan ended after eight. We jumped over and Scotland, Sweden is where we now feature. Eve Muirhead, Margareta Sigfridsen, two skips well known to the world scene and playoff scene. Here, 2016, they'd like to be on the podium as well. Long week ahead as this day one of competition Luke Coley here with Hans Frohenlob. Margareta Sigfridsson, if you're unfamiliar, throws the lead stones but calls the game for this Swedish team. Has never won a world championship, though. Numerous silver medals to her credit, including an Olympic silver medal. Of course, Swedish women's curling has a long and illustrious history. Going back to the curling surgeon, Elizabeth Gustafsson. And of course, the great teams of Annette Norberg. So a long, proud history of success in Swedish women's curling. So a tall order here for former world champion Eve Muirhead. Really needs the deuce here to give herself a chance to steal the 10th and steal the game. Well, that first stone into the rings. Corner guard out in front. And now trying to go around and just one of those in between touches it. Yeah, bit of a tweener. Well, and it's been a while for the Swedish team since they've made it into the playoffs. And they were unable to make the playoffs last year, had a losing record. In fact, lost a tiebreaker in 2014. Can we stand yeah, ben, we're now they're trying to manipulate these stones. A big scrub to get it there. So we look in Russia, Finland. Finland with the yellow stones. It looks like Russia's lying second shot, and Anna Sidorova has the hit. Needs probably a little roll in order to get a deuce. Trying to extend her lead, she leads 
in the eighth end. And here, a eh, little roll. Wasn't too much needed. Gets her two. So after eight, it is 7-3. Russia leading, trying to improve to 2-0. Oh. Well, Sweden peels the corner in our feature game now. Russia looking to move to 2-0. Oh. Well, they will take on Japan, who is now 2-0. That'll be a mouth-watering contest. Both teams coming through today really, really strong. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how Japan plays in that game against a perennial favorite, a two-time world bronze medalist, European champion. On this bigger stage. See how that young team will, uh, will test against one of the best. Here in this one, uh, Scotland now has no corner guard to use. They're trying to come into the rings, use these yellow Swedish rocks to their advantage. A little tap and roll. And a single by Sweden in that eighth end. It very well could have been a steal and a multiple point steal by Scotland had they been able to take advantage of the openings they had. They had lots of guards in play, trying to go for the steal, just couldn't make that shot that they needed. Boom. And look at him go. Maria Weinerstrom, of course, was not at the World Championship last year, as was with her, pregnant with her son, John. Well, not, may not have known that at that time, but he's a eight-month-old son. It's a little different lineup for them. Ethan, your head. Willing that rock to stop so it didn't create any separation, but we did see the bump, so small gap here for the Swedes. Try and poke it through that hole. Or come across the face of it. Coming across the face is the safer of the options. Well, Christina Bertrup. Try and do as asked here. Gets away with it, doesn't touch their own. May have liked to kick that back one over a bit. thing you make this it's hard to get a two probably out of the end they are really clustered close to that center line right in front of the forefoot so you're right Luke scoring area is quite small here's Anna Sloan the only left-hander in the entire tournament currently dating Eve's brother Glenn Muirhead Looking for it to just slightly come across the face of it and a little flop inside. I well, just couldn't good. afford to sweep at it. Yeah, it's, uh, they were looking for, I think, back four foot weight instead of just T-line back button weight. But they did have to wait for it. They did have to curl. But the stone's in an interesting place for the Swedes. Look for a second like they're going to try and pound it, but now that they appear to be electing the guard. Well, it does look, appear the shot is that yellow stone. I would say definitely it's the yellow stone. It is, however, behind the T-line. Okay. 
Well, longtime team members. We heard the sweeping call, Pritz. With the two Marias, so they got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, you can't ask for Maria to sweep, otherwise you're going to get a little bit more Pleats than you want. Pleats or uh, Weinerstrom of who you're going to have to sweep that stone. Joke about that being with the one sweeper going on, that is always the question of what happens if they have the same name? Well, we just saw an example. you got to use the surname. So a bit of a discussion about the weight. So for some of them may not know, difference between normal and peel weight. So normal weight is a takeout weight shot where you're yeah. just trying to remove the stone. Peel weight was when you're throwing it a little extra hard uh, so you can make contact and spill your own stone away. Uh, the worry about throwing peel weight in this situation might be um, stepping it up and maybe missing the stone entirely. So she just wants to reposition this stone to open up access to the shot rock. And right out of her hand, can Sarah Reed hold this one? Well, she hit half the rock just like Eve was asking for. And really does rearrange them. Opens it up. There is now a little more room accessible. Scotland's got the last rock here. We can see great sweeping here by the Scots. Hits half the rock, spills that backstone just as Eve Muir had predicted it would. Anna Sloan justifiably pretty happy with that one. So Sweden lies one. But they have that extremely dangerous Scottish stone sitting directly in front. That thing just warped towards the center line at the end. They really do finish hard. Is there the double or you can actually, maybe even the triple? I think there's a triple on here. I think Eve, if she can clip that top one thin, she'll carry him into that second stone, send it across the face of the red, and push that back yellow stone back further in the house, maybe out of the house. There we see the angle. She's going to try and hit that left-hand stone first as we're looking at it from this overhead. It's not far away. Well, trying to make the double. Won't catch the back ones, but sits there to sit second and third. So now all of a sudden it gets a bit more dangerous for Team Sweden. Two Scottish stones in the front half of the house. Sweden's lying shot, but it's very vulnerable now at the back of the button. See on the replay, Muirhead gets contact and leaves her stone sitting squarely on the center line. Removes two Swedish shots. Sweden's lying one, Scotland lying second and third. A little extension from Maria Pritz. Able to make this double. And wow. just picks it off the top. What a great shot. Gets it out. Look That's at the smile. Unbelievable that picked that one that clean straight off the face. From Sigurdsson screaming, I thought that they'd lost this one, but... Man, oh man, what a fantastic shot. Listen to the screaming and the yelling on the sweep, but look at that pick. 
That redstone goes sideways right out of the house. You can see a great angle here. Watch that redstone going right across the face of that yellow stone. I, I think with the panic, I think that she thought they lost it. They almost did, but boy, oh boy, did that work out great for Team Sweden. So now Muirhead to save the end. And we'll need to take her one, make get her one, and then try and steal in 10. Nope. Needs to make this one first, however. Sweeping it for the curl, and here it finishes. Nice shot by Muirhead. Just oh, what a difference that, that sweeping. You put the broom down, and it didn't look like it had any chance at the hog line. We're sitting right on the other end of the sheet, and it curled enough, taps it back, gets one for three. Sweden leads and has the all-important last stone in the 10th end. Well, Hans, this really the shot that was the difference in the end. It looked like Eve had something set up to try and get two for Scotland. Maria Pritz says, I don't think so. An incredible double takeout. Look at the contact point. Just picks it out. Wow, just incredible shooting. One of the greatest shot makers in the last little few years of women's curling, Maria Pritz. They would love to turn all those silvers into one gold this year in swift current. Well, they say you've got to be in a final to win a final. So you're absolutely right. They'd love to get to the top of the podium, as would the other 11 teams here at this tournament. But it's They've definitely advantage Sweden. They've got the uh, hammer here in the 10th end, and they're up one. Here's the tick shots. Margareta Sigfridsen. and we'll just touch it. Doesn't move it that much. Still a guard in play. Yep, Scotland will happily use that guard. They will throw another one. Sarah Reed having a good solid game. I don't want this to bite the house, however. Will it come to rest? Just. Well, that's pretty well placed. Let's see if they try the tick again or they try and push that tight guard in. Does look like they're going to make another run at that front stone. And of course, if they go past, they could push that second stone into the house. 
Can't remove it from play, however. There's a lot of curling to do to get to that front stone. See the numbers for Siegfriedsen. She will touch that top one over. And a and bit gets, of a saber. Yeah, it has that one. That becomes a big shot, a big stone in the house later on. Scotland, of course, will ignore that. They'll just keep piling up the center guards. They need to steal this end to force the extra. Lower numbers for Vicky Adams. Skip Muirhead was calling for line, but the sweepers say we need to get it across first. Yeah, it can have all the line at once. If it's not over the hog line, it doesn't do you any good. Too right. So the two guards, three technically, two on the center line. Yep, big, big separation between them all. Sweden would like to remove at least one of them, maybe two. Winterstrom does the job, kills the long guard. You're enjoying bonus coverage here in the second draw of the 2016 Ford World Women's Curling Championships. You're live with us in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. Saturday night curling here in the heartland. And it's a barn burner. Wouldn't have expected anything else with these two teams uh, matching up. I don't want to get it too close that a double peel is available. Well, Sigur Sigurdsson will definitely be eyeing that up. She can hit between just over three quarters and maybe spill two. Yeah, hey. Maria Weinerstrom. Yeah. There's one. Get the second. There's two. Roll the shooter off. And opens up the four foot area. So games are starting to finishing up, and so we see now that Russia has closed it out against Finland, and so Russia goes to 2-0. and They take that game 7-4. to Anna Sidorova is 2-0, and and Finland falls to 0-2. Russia, the European champions coming in. beat Scotland and Eve Muirhead in that championship game. So an interesting situation brewing here, Luke. So that we see those two Swedish stones out there on the wing. Scotland may need them and later in the end to try and force a shot for Maria Pritz on the last. Sweden, of course, will just try to keep the center open. Christina Beretrup trying to roll it off. And those corner guards creep a little bit closer to the center. So making the out turn draw now a little bit more difficult for the Swedes if they have to throw it. It's always a good answer for the player in the hack to say to the skip, go with your first instinct. I'm happy to throw it. Yeah, if impartial, if you're impartial yourself, just let the uh, skip make that ultimate decision at the end. Being the left-hander, this is Anna's out turn. Trying to bury it behind those yellow stones. Good looking line. 
finishing really hard. Really does go hard to the edges. Well, we saw that in the official practice day yesterday. Going out to the wings, there was a good six and a half feet of curl. So they will definitely finish. So they're not the center guards that Scotland would like, but they are guards. And at this point, you're trying to force Sweden to have to make a tough shot on their last one. Sweden will just try to follow that one down. They don't want this one to overcurl. Sigfridsson coming out to help with the sweeping. And they get it very close <laughs> yeah, we'll to being shot have, stone. We'll have to have another look on our overhead. And Eve Muirhead is certainly taking a close look at it. This is important. You wouldn't want to make a wrong decision and assume first, that you're shot and then you're not. At first glance, I thought it was they got it far enough. Well, there's a really good look from our overhead. And even with that, it's pretty close. It looks like it might be yellow, but boy, it's close. And even Anna believe it's the red stone. I thought it was yellow, but... Yeah, looking at it more closely, it might be red. So does that change your, your plan here? It does a little bit. If, if you think you're shot, then you can um, really take try and take the play back into the center of the sheet again. So top four foot on this? Well, I'm not sure. Even I, right I to the button. I didn't see where they were looking to play. Uh, they might even be trying a, a tight center guard or half covering. Level with the red, so that is telling us that they want to come around that stone. No, no, level with the front red, so it is a guard. So she does take the play back into the center. She knows she has to steal this end to win the game, and she doesn't think that one on the eight foot's going to be good enough. So she throws up a center guard looking for that nose hit and an opportunity to try and get around it and steal. Is there any thought to try and peel it into those to move those ones around if you're Sweden? Well, it's a pretty risky play if you're Sweden. You just want to try and keep it open for your last shot. So I think they'd probably be inclined to try and drive it the other way away from the pile. Saying that, they couldn't do too much damage if they drove it into the pile because it would jam on the red. But there is a high chance that they could leave that red shot sitting shot. Safety would say that you hammer it on the high side and drive it off to the uh, to the right hand side of the sheet. Yeah. Well, Maria Pritz had made that key shot in the ninth. Now just looking for the straight peel. She'll do just that. So she does jam on the corner guard, but now Muirhead has a decision. Remember, Scotland has to steal. And if Scotland is lying one, then they could make things very interesting by throwing it half into the eight foot for second shot. And that would leave Sweden with a very difficult draw against two potentially to try and win the game. I think def it's definitely like that way. This hand. Yeah. Okay. David Hay, team coach. Watching on. So the play is a draw. They'd like it to come to rest on the center line, just full into that front eight foot circle to count out that Swedish stone. They think that would leave them lying too. All Frederick Hellstrom can do is watch. So Muirhead. Oh, she wants even a bit more ice, I think. Asking for just a fraction more from Anna Sloan. Trying to force Sweden to have to make a shot against two to win the game. This one is really curling. And it's coming up short. Well, really try, uh, came down on him. So that takes a lot of the pressure off Sweden. Eve Muirhead looking puzzled. She liked the line of the shot, but it really came up 
short well, when it started short. to make its move. They were trying to get that one up into that white eight foot circle, but that's really about 10 feet light. Does close a pass in. There's still definitely ports available to get in there. Well, there are. I mean, this really takes a lot of the pressure off for Team Sweden. If Scotland would have gotten that one in for second shot, that would make Maria Pritz's heart beat a little bit more quickly. This is still a difficult shot, but if she misses, uh, Sweden at least gets an extra end. So, Well, looking at it, they took a look at whose shot. Do they think their shot? Do they... Well, if they thought that they were shot, they could just throw the stone away and then they wouldn't uh, risk anything. There is a port there, so she is going to try and play the draw, the outturn draw through that port. Needs full eight foot to clinch this one. We see on our overhead, probably a measure between those two stones. If Scotland's lying one, this is a shot to try and win the game. Well, Maria Pritz, fourth stone thrower, her final shot. And it's all about the line. They have to navigate this port. Well, here trying to get it to curl now. Curl past the guard first. Well, they're past the guard. Now it's a question of the weight. And calm as you like into the forefoot, and Sweden wins this game. Just a well done. It looked for a while it hung on that spot, but curled past the guard right into the forefoot, and Sweden wins this battle. And Handshakes at the coaches' bench as well. David Hay, Peya Lindholm, both champions themselves. Hugs all around for Team Sweden. A tight, tight victory. Well fought. 5-3 win. They can smile and laugh with the relief now, but boy, they had to work for that one, Luke. Well, last rock came down to it. Wouldn't surprise me we see those two face one another at some point later in the week. The pedigree of those two curling nations as we see the other game wrapping up. Germany defeating Korea, running them out of stones. So Germany starts off with a victory and knocking Korea off with the 8-5 victory over on sheet C. So quite a first day here at the 2016 Ford World Women's Curling Championships. Our, Our feature game featured Japan really dominating Italy with a 10-3 victory in eight ends and a perfect 100% shooting performance from Satsuki Fujisawara. Well, if this is what we're seeing all week, Luke, we're in for some uh, fantastic uh, entertainment. It has been a great start to the first day of competition. So we look at the highlights of our feature game, Italy and Japan. And in the second end, a freeze missed by Apollonio leaving the opening. Now for Satsuki Fujisawa, play the out turn hit. And stick to score the triple. And easy, easily and nicely done. The Japanese skip strikes first with three in the second end. Fourth end had control throughout and missed double by Italy. Leaves the door open. As she did in the second. Has a hit and stick to score another three. Just like that. Two triples in the first four ends. And sixth end. Good effort, a, a freeze. Narrowly missed, the angle not quite there, leaving shot stone for Japan. And multiple score, that's what this game was all about for Satsuki Fujisawa. Put it in the forefoot, there's a two. 
And a commanding lead at that point. And for good measure, in the eighth end, the handshakes come out after another deuce. It is a 10-3 victory. And as Han said, a perfect game for Satsuki Fujisawa. Other games finishing up is Sweden defeating Scotland 5-3. Well, on sheet C, it was Germany knocking off Korea 8-5 and Russia defeating Finland to move to 2-0, 7-4. And just the two draws on day one leaves us with two teams atop the standings at 2-0 records, Japan and Russia. They'll play tomorrow. Canada, Germany, Sweden, Switzerland all sit with one win in the first half of the leaderboard. Well, Denmark, Korea, Scotland, and the U.S. at 0-1-1. And two teams at 0-1-2 right now, Finland and Italy. Satsuki, two very impressive wins today for your team. What were your keys to victory tonight? もう今日の素晴らしい2試合の勝ちで、今日は特にキーは何かありますかえっと、まず初日だったのでアイスをナイスの状態を早く読むこと、そしてそのアイスの状態を踏まえてスイープをうまく使うことをポイントにしていたので